Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 79 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, can I rotate with you? I always forget. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, where's that other wrench? I'm setting up just a little bit of automation today. Just a little bit. There we go. Cool. Nice. Um, because I want to play with something new from New Metacraft. Uh, Newish, at least to this series. I think I've played with them a little bit in the past, but it's been a long time since I've really done anything particularly cool with them. Um, now, what I'd like to try real quick is to see if I can make a PCB from scratch. A finished PCB. I should have just programmed all this. And if I'm not mistaken, this should work. But let's find out if I did it right. You ready? Go. Oh, look at this thing going. Nice. Lasering it up. I need to add an Easter egg to laser IO where I make it go because that's what a laser does. I'm just saying. Oh, look who's outside. Pillagers. Pillagers outside to visit. Well, don't mind if I do. Let's go, friends. Questions? About whether or not you should be coming here ever again? I hope you don't have any. Uh, so, hey, cool. Did we get a finished PCB? We did. Nice. Uh, now, it also made some of these, auto or can make some of these automatically, but it didn't because it didn't. So let's start this guy again. Oh, beautiful. How cool is that? Look at it go. And this guy should be running with his lasery stuff. And it did it. Nice. Perfect. That's just what I wanted to test. So all I did was just add a crafter to this machine, add a few more recipes to this crafter, and we're good to go. The other thing I made uh, doable today is rotors, and I'd like to get a handful of them if you don't mind. Which should happen pretty quickly. It's thinking about it. Nice. That's cool. I'm liking it. Rotors for fun times. Because we can get into drones now. Um, and I want to try these out. Just to mess with them a little bit. Um, there's a whole chapter on drones. Uh, drone programming. But then there's also logistics drones, which I think are like less programmy and more like basic, but can do cool stuff still. Um, move items and fluids around. Uh, so we're going to need a logistics configurator, a logistics core, logistics drones, logistics frames, and logistics modules. Maybe I should be teaching all these things how to be made. Right? Uh, so logistics core and logistics drone and logistics frames. I think I've played with this a little bit before. It's been a while since I've played with it, but I want to check it out. Active provider. And logistics module. I'm not sure what that should be. Uh, and that should be cool, right? Is that pretty much everything? I think so. Core, drone, frames, module. And I just need the configurator. Which hopefully I can make easily enough. Sweet. And hey, guess what should be getting charged? Oh, maybe not charged here. Um, can I make you do... Remember last episode we set this little fancy thing up. Can I make you do both things on the on the right side? Armor slots, offhand, ender inventory, unconnected, main inventory. So if I put you on main inventory, that would fill up the pressure on this dude. If I want you to do armor slots, I can't have it do both. I don't think I can have it do both. That's okay. If it turns out that I want that, I could always just have another side do main inventory and pipe into that, right? Yeah. But I could always do this, which works too. 
Sweet. All right, cool. Let's get all these. It's always easier if you're going to put in bulk here to do something like this. Yoinks. Perfect. All right, let's check out drones. So we're going to want a drone programmer, right? Because there's two types of drones, I think. Like you have your basic drone, but then you have your logistics drones. And then you also have harvesting and guard and collector drones that do stuff too. So let's start with just a drone. Seem cool? Um, and then we're going to want a programming station. That needs some kind of stained... It has to be black? Okay. We can make that happen. There we go. Hooray! Coding 101. Now, does this need power? I don't think it does. Holy cow, that's complicated. Difficulty, only basic widgets are shown. Jump and labels, and then advanced with variables. <laughs> this looks pretty complex. Uh, I am not going to lie. I have not messed with this in a very long time. Flow control widgets, world interaction widgets, condition widgets, other widgets. I bet you can do some pretty crazy stuff with this thing. That's all I'm going to say. Let me flip through this book a little bit for a minute and then come back because things. We also need programmer puzzle pieces from what I'm learning. And that should be in a chest adjacent to the programmer. Cool. Okay. I've got bad omen on me. That's a bummer. Uh, I think I can solve that with you. Do I have... I do have the spell. Hooray! And then we also need a GPS tool. Um, a regular GPS tool would be nice. And then a GPS area tool. Oh my, we need two of these, huh? You don't know how to make plastic. Should I teach you how to make plastic? What would be the how to make plastic button? It's basically just a lever. Technically what you could say... That's right, you get stuck. And what we want to do, there you go. Now you'll behave a little bit better. He gets stuck on world unload and reload. It's a little bit of a stinker -ness. Um This should, I'll let him get to the proper temperature and then we'll turn it back on. How would I go about doing that is a really good question. Um, we could restructure how this works um, to either always keep a stack of plastic sheets available. That could be cool. That could be cool, right? Could do something like that. You want to do that? That could be fun. That could be fun. So what I would say is we'd want a functional storage drawer. Do we not have any oak wood? We just happen to be out. So if we had a functional storage drawer. What's going on here? Um, <clears throat> and maybe you sat there and you stored plastic sheets. And then you know how you insert on orange? What if we did that here, right? But you're actually doing the white thing, right? Okay, yeah. So what we probably want to have is you just do plastic buckets and then also have you So you're extracting plastic, right? On orange, let's also have you on magenta extract empty buckets. Cool. And then you'll insert on magenta. Technically, you could probably do that with like with filters on the insert and uh, or you could do it with, you know, 
uh, priorities. Doesn't matter. Uh, so that should be working again. Right? So if I do this now, right, all the plastic goes in here rather than here. Okay, then let's lock this dude. Okay. And what we're going to want to do is have like a sensor on it of some kind. Which is the RF tools one that can measure the amount of items in an inventory. Uh, timer, receiver, logic, sequencer, sensor, inventory checker. I think that's what we want. Yeah. Um, so amount 64. Right. And then of you. Slot zero. Does that sound cool? So now if I said you to actually be 32 for. A and. Instead of the redstone card being here, let's put it here. Hopefully this connects correctly. Ah, nice. Okay, and then when he's 64, he's off. Okay, cool. See? And with 32, he's emitting a redstone signal. Got it? Okay. So... Now we just need to invert this somehow. Um, we could do it with Super Circuit Maker pretty easily, I think. All we'd realistically need is a redstone torch. Technically just one. Can you not go on the wall? Super Circuit Maker? Ooh! Le Gasp! That makes things a lot less cool than I wanted them to be. I'm assuming that's a Wandering Trader. A Red Merchant? What's a Red Merchant? Uh -huh. What? What is this? What's a Red Merchant? There's like a scroll wheel here, but I can't seem to figure out how to move it. At least I assume that's a scroll wheel. I don't know what a red merchant is. Uh, let's get a uh, mob imprisonment tool. I would like to borrow one of you. Oh, I can't. Aha! Look at that. Okay. Uh, how about a glass bottle? And shrink. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's cool. All right, you go away so I can figure out what you are at some point in the future. I don't know which mod adds that. Don't know. All right, so if I can't super circuit maker this thing, uh, that's a bit of a bummer. I mean, what we could do is something like this with a redstone torch. All right? Wouldn't you do the thing where that turns that off or no? I would expect you to. Output is on. You're not... You're not going to toggle that? Just for giggles for a sec. Really? Maybe he just doesn't do a strong signal. Um, how to do this in a cool way. You know what I could just do? Let's just do it like this. You ready? You, you, and then how about on the down, your extract on white will be on redstone signal low. 
right? And then if we got a laser dude here to connect these, that turned him off because he's low. Got it? Okay. So you ready? Check this out. Um, so we give it to you. We do no more. Don't even know why I had that. Um, that's probably the easiest way. Uh, so let's do this. If I made you 128, he's going to turn off the signal, which allows the transfer of molten plastic. And then once we hit 128, he will stop. Is that cool? I mean, yes. Right? And I just need one of these bad boys. And now we should have basically plastic auto crafting and unlimited. Anytime we take plastic out of here, it's going to make more. Ready? So let's get this up to 128. We'll let that get close and then we'll come back. All right. So here we go. We're close. 122. Oh, there's a squid over there. That's cool. Uh, so once we hit 125, we should see the redstone signal up there turn on. 128, I mean. And that turns off this. Now remember, there's a few buckets in here. So what it turns off is the transferring of empty buckets to being filled up. So we'll always have a little bit more than 128, which is fine, right? And then if I use plastic, boom, the redstone signal turns off, the crafting resumes. And then once we have enough plastic, the redstone signal turns on. And we're cool, right? And then it just finishes that. Awesome. All right, cool. So that's fully automated plastics. My opinion, pretty neat. You're welcome to have a differing opinion. It would be wrong, though. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty slick, right? Isn't that neat? All right. So where was I? I was making stuffs. Uh, yeah, I needed uh, another GPS tool. Right? I technically need two GPS tools. And that'll get me a GPS area tool. Slick. All right, back to reading. All right, so one thing we're going to need is a charging station because drones need to charge. And they will charge themselves if they get low on power. Uh, so what I thought I would do is this. Sweet. Uh, and then run on low signal. Actually, let's run you on high signal. I'll just toggle that. Cool. And we could probably throw a few speed upgrades in there, because this is a pretty small little network we got going on. Now, does this one also have the heat problem? I think he does. So let's do the heat sink thing. That should be fine. That'll keep you nice and, well, relatively cool. The speed upgrades don't help, but that's okay. Once we get to the appropriate pressure, then we should be fine. Nice. Okay. Uh, so let's get into programming a little bit. Uh, so I know that we've got this, and I think if I hit tab here, that'll show me all the programming pieces. So basically to program drones, you drag puzzle pieces onto this big board, okay? Um, so that's what I've got so far. So let's call this minor, or maybe not. Can I not type in here? Maybe not yet, we'll see. So if you want to, to start this yourself, basically go into the basic drone tutorial, and this is what I'm walking through. I'm not reading through the whole thing, but this will get you going, right? So if you want to go through and learn how to make drone programs, you can as well. All right, so what we want to do is add the start icon first. And again, you can hit tab to see more of these all at once, okay? So we're going to add start, okay? And as you can see, I for info, and it'll, oh, look at that. Uh, this is where your program starts. It must exist, and there can be only one. <laughs> uh, you'll also notice it's red. There's no piece connected at the bottom. And the reason it's red, oh, you can mouse wheel in and out. That is cool. Man, this GUI, let me tell you. As somebody who's written his fair share of UIs, my head hurts just thinking about what's involved in writing something like this. Um, that is super good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, <laughs> whew, that is something. So, we're going to start the program. It's, it's not happy because it's just a start. There's nothing 
that happens, right? Uh, so now what we want to have here is an import from inventory. So like, look at all the cool things we can do. Like, there's just a ton of stuff. Import from inventory, that's what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna drag that in and snap it in. Uh, trying sides up, so it doesn't matter which side. Um, right click for widget options. Oh man, import from inventory, that's awesome. That is cool. All right, now his problem is there's no area specified. So we wanna specify an area using our GPS tool. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to make a program that will find a shovel in this chest and then mine out a little area. I think that's what it's supposed to do, right? Um, so what we want to do is drag an area widget and connect it to the right, not left, of the import widget, and an item filter widget also to the right of the import widget. Again, make sure they snap together, okay? So area and item filter widget to the right of the import widget. Okay, so we want an area. Now I think we can search. Oh, cool, look at that. And then also a filter, item filter. Oh, look at that, and that snaps there. So see how like, that's cool because you specify the area and you specify the item filter. Sweet. That is awesome. That is super cool. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's set, right? You'll also notice here it doesn't have a red border because it doesn't have area to find. Take your GPS tool, right click on a chest. The shovel you placed in, you'll see it highlights location. Cool. So we take our GPS tool. Can we use just the GPS tool? Or do we need the GPS area tool? I guess we'll find out. And then left click it on there. Sweet. That is awesome. Look at that. All right. And now for item filter, um, can I drag from here? Because that would be super cool. Oh, I can. Nice. Search item, search inventory. That's cool. All right. So I think we just programmed the item pickup. So we told our drone to start the program. We want to import from inventory. So find an item in the chest at this location and find a shovel. Seems straightforward enough, right? All right. Now we want to tell it after you've picked up the item. Right? Now, can I move this whole? Oh, I can. That is so cool. Um, we want to dig, right? So dig area. Uh, and again, we're going to need an area widget. And this time I assume we want to use the GPS tool, area tool. So I'm guessing, oh my goodness. Neat. Oh, there's a left click. Okay, got you, got you for area. And I'm guessing that's going to be that whole area, right? I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, GPS area tool, right click a block to form one corner of the area, left click a block to the opposite corner. Since we're going to be using a shovel, try to stick with dirt and sand. You can left and right click the tool in the area to open a configuration. Well, look at that, cool. Ooh. That's neat. Change area type, box, sphere, line. Wow, that's awesome. And then I guess you could, that is super cool. That is super cool. Man, is that complex. So now we want to go tell him that you're going to dig in the using the area tool. And see that? That filled in this information. That is super awesome. Um, order closest requires digging tool. That's neat. Okay, cool. All right, so now what we do is we take our drone. Let's give him a little bit of pressure, but not too much because I want to see him charge himself, right? And then I can put this in here and we do the export. Hooray, that's cool. And then he should be good to go. Now, if I sleep through the night because I want to see this during the day, but... In theory, we should be awesome now, right? 
Uh, we plop our drone down. And what he should do is go grab his... Oh my goodness, look at him go. And remember he said he did closest first? So remember the dig mode was closest? That is neato. And once his pressure gets low, he should start looking for a charging station nearby. But we'll validate that that is true. That's the reason I gave him like a really small amount of pressure, because I wanted... I wanted to see him do his thing. I think I can hit Y, something like that, to see stuff. Well, that was stinking cool. That is really stinking cool. How cool is that? How cool is that? Eh? Now, if I replace stuff, does he, like, keep trying to dig? Actually, let's do... Oh, yeah, build to me. Ha ha! He keeps it dug. How neat is that? Pressure negative one bar. That can't be good. When are you going to go charge yourself, Mr. Drone? At some point, I would imagine he would. Do you have a UI of some sort? Uh, nope, he ran out of power. I thought he recharges automatically. Doesn't he recharge automatically and, like, look for a charging station? Uh, puzzle pieces, place pressurized drone, perform its tasks. Drones are smart. When they're low on air, they'll stop and main program search for a charging station that has a dispenser upgrade. Aha. Aha. There's your problem. There's your problem. There was no dispenser upgrade in the charging station. That's on me. That's on me. Uh, maybe I need this. Oh, hello. Perfect. There's my drone. Okay. So then we get the the dude. And now he should, because he's low, he's going to go and charge himself up. Because we did the dispenser upgrade. Ah, that's cool. Now, if we wanted to throw some speed upgrades in there, it might not be a terrible idea. That could be cool. Look at him go. Now he's charging. Now he's charging. And I assume 10's the max. So he'll fill all the way up. And then get back to work. That is super cool. And remember, the first thing he's going to do is grab a shovel. Oh, that's awesome. How cool is that? I really like that. And then we can pick him up. Now, what's this uh, logistics configurator do? Oh, that's right. We don't have a logistics drone yet. We're just playing with normal drones. Dismantled by wrench. Sweet. I think that's cool. I mean, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's super cool. Um, now, where did I put my gadget? Oh, there it is. I mean, let's look at all the other stuff we can do in here. Now that we have the gist, right? I mean, we can do things like entity attack, dig area, harvest, place, right click. Nice. Right-click Entity. Pick up items. Drop items. Void items. Void fluid. Export to inventory. Export fluids. Nice. Import and export entity. That's kind of cool. Import and export RF. Go to locations. Teleport to locations. Oh, that's neat. Uh, uses 10,000 milliliters of air to teleport, which is most of an upgraded drone's capacity. Unupgraded drone's capacity. Volume upgrades are recommended. That is neat. 
All right, Emmet Redstone, Wait, Rename Drone, External Program, Crafting, Standby, Logistics, Edit Sign, Computer Control. Oh my goodness, super cool. All right, so let's see if I can make my own program without following a guide. And what I want is one that will... Ooh, interesting. Oh, because that's not the GPS tool. <laughs> Dire, please. There we go. GPS area. Okay, cool. And I guess that would, uh, that should include this guy. Like if we do, see, it's it renders a box if the area is empty, but it doesn't render it if it's not, but that's okay. So that should be the area tool. Let's change this drone program. Instead of digging the area, let's have it, um, we probably don't need any of this. So how do we get rid of things? Trash? Do I just drag it to the trash? Oh, hello. That's cool. You know, wonder if I get those program pieces back or what? Um, so what we want, we don't need to get anything. All we really need to do is harvest. Uh, and then we probably want an area. And we want to give it the GPS tool. And like, that's it for a harvest program, like literally it. Um, but then we might want to also have it pick up and put into the chest. All right. Pick up items and have it go into the chest, maybe, area. Uh, actually, there's two sides to this guy. So this might be this one. Let's see, if we eye this, does it tell me? The drone will pick up items in the world and put them in its, into its inventory. Keep in mind that any area widgets connected to this widget must have an area type box. Okay. Okay, so you know what we probably want to do is pick up and then export to inventory. And then give that the area widget for the chest. So the GPS area tool should be where we should pick up. So harvest in the area, pick up items in the area, and then put the items in the chest. Eh? Let's see how right I am about this. Let's do it. So for now, he's just gonna chill, right? Um, and if we get some bone meal. Oh, I have a magnet. Silly dire. The magnets and the things. Oh, he picked up. Okay. So he's harvesting. So no, you know what we should do. All right, let's 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 do this now. Um, not that one. I'm gonna put this guy away because I don't need the logistics version of this yet. But what I'm going to do, then what I'm going to say is, after you've put items into the chest, okay, let's import from inventory, and then the area will be the chest, and then the item filter will be seeds. That's cool, All right? And then we want to plant them. How would we plant them? Place block, maybe? Uh, place. And then we would want our area and probably an item filter again for seeds. And then the area would be the same area that we're harvesting from. Right. And then we're going to want to any excess seeds we have. So like take the seeds out of the chest, go plant them in that area, and then place them back in the chest, any excess we have. Right. So for that, we would need another um, insert export to inventory. Pretty much anything we have. 
at that point into the chest inventory, right? So that so now the program is start, harvest in the area, pick up any items in the area, put them all into the chest, then grab items from the chest, right? But only seeds, plant the seeds in the world in the same area, and then put the seeds back in the chest, any excess seeds that we have. Now, easily we could have multiple drones doing multiple tasks, but let's see what happens. So he's getting the seeds because there was nothing to plan, to harvest, right? And now he's just chilling, right? So now watch what happens. Oops. I guess he'll pick up the items at least. Boop. Boop. That is so stinking cool. So now he's going to harvest. He's going to put the items in the chest. He's going to grab seeds. He's going to plant them. And now he's going to grab the wheat. Oh my goodness, that is cool. And now he's just going to chill. And look, he's just looping at this point. He's, I'm grabbing your seeds, I'm putting them back. I'm grabbing your seeds and putting them back. Because he's realizing there's nowhere for him to plant this, right? And then he does his thing. That is so stinking cool. How easy was that? Like, that was not hard to set up at all. You could set up some really complex logic with these drones. I'm just saying. Like, these drones can do a lot of cool things. And it wasn't hard to set up, right? Like, I want to do some automation with drones. A, because it was, like, super easy to do, and B, because it was, like, really reliable. Like, in the past, anytime I've worked with mods that have entities that do things, it's always been, like, a little hit or miss. Because entities are weird. Like, they just have their own problems. But that is really good looking. Like, I am impressed. I'm sure I've worked with these before a little bit, but holy cow am I impressed. Like, that is really stinking cool. Um... So let's do this. Let's probably wrap up the episode here. Uh, we'll come back next time, and I'll think if I can come up with something cool to automate this with. Because, like, I would very much like to do more with this. Um, I just need to think of what can we automate with drones at this point. Now, obviously, we could do things like item transfer. We could do fluid transfer. And logistics drones, we haven't even looked at yet. Those look pretty neat, too. Um, and I get the impression we can do some cool stuff with those, but wow, I am, I am impressed with what you can do with drones. Like that is just neat, but yeah, let's wrap up here. Uh, and by the way, this was the easy difficulty of things. You can get into medium and then there's a lot more programming things. Like you can do conditions on blocks and items and oh my goodness, RF conditions, fluid condition, light level conditions, redstone conditions, condition block. Middle click for info. It allows you to check an area for certain blocks. Oh, that is cool. You can check for like a full grown crop. You can filter which blocks are valid by attaching an item filter. That is neato. Condition items, condition fluid. Drone condition upgrades. My goodness, there's some cool stuff in here. Uh, and then there's advanced, which unlocks, enables coordinates and variables. Uh, neato. I don't know what it added, but it might have added things over here. Converts the program to use relative coordinates everywhere. Useful to share programs or use them in some place else. This will generate coordinate operator pieces under the start piece. A coordinate operator piece is required directly in the start piece to define a base coordinate. This will be the only coordinate that needs to be changed in the future. <gasps> that is cool. I was actually thinking in my brain, like, I wonder if there's, like, a way to do relative coordinates. Because, like, yes, right? Like, you might want multiple similar programs and you don't want to rewrite and remodify the areas all the time. That is really stinking cool. Rotate any coordinate widget which looks like offsets clockwise by 90. Oh, man, that is neato. So there's definitely a few widgets added by going advanced, but then you can use coordinates. That is just awesome. And you can send a paste bin. So if you like want to share your code with other people, that is cool. 
There's a teleport to location thing. I mean, that is just item assignment, setting variable. Oh, man. That looks really cool. All right. Got to wrap up because I will get lost um, in this in this mod and, and the programmer capabilities. So for now, Double 20 sign off. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we will definitely do something cool with drones. I just need to figure out what. I haven't set up any kind of, like, you know, crop farm yet. Um, we've been doing a little bit here and there, mostly with other things, but that could be fun to do. Um, though we kind of just did one. But there's, like, lots we could do with it. Um, and at some point soon, I need to check out the whole new trains thing with with create because we haven't seen that yet but yeah there's definitely some neat stuff we could look at um automating with drones but for now wrapping up point double 20 sign off hope you enjoyed the episode take it easy